Hello everybody, welcome to lesson two of Pure Data for our digital music making class. This is Joseph Norman. Today we're going to be expanding on the sequencer that we built in lesson one. We're going to be adding a polyphonic element so that our notes can overlap, and we're going to be adding some variability to our envelope generator. To begin, let's save a new PD patch as lesson two. And let us start by recreating the random sequencer that we began in lesson one. So, command one for new object, random, 12. And let's go ahead and create our addition object, plus 60, just like before. Let's create a metronome. For now, we'll just say 250 up above our random here. And then we'll create our toggle box. Remember, Shift-Command-T has a shortcut for that. And we will attach that to our metronome. OK. And then we'll create a number box, Command-3. And that will just let us keep track of what's coming out of our addition box here. OK, the next stage. Uh, for what we're going to do, we're going to create a sub patch that will act as uh, the polyphonic portion. So, in order for this little segment here in our master patch to communicate with it, we need to create a message that's command 2. We'll put that here, and the message will have to be next and then dollar sign 1. And we're going to go ahead and connect the output of that number box here to next. Okay, so we're going to go to our file menu and we're going to say new and we're going to save this as lesson to, we'll just say saw and then uh, we're going to say dot cl dot pd. Okay, we're going to go here, we're going to create a new object and we're going to title that one Inlet. OK. That will allow information to come inside of this patch when we call this patch up inside of our master patch. And then we're going to create our M to F object in here. OK. And then coming out of the M to F, we're going to create a, an oscillator. This time we use Phasor, which is a, a sawtooth oscillator. Okay, and then for phaser to really sound halfway decent, we're going to want to create a little low-pass filter. We can talk about the specifics of filtering a little bit later, but for now we'll just do low P, L-O-P, tilde, and we just put in some sort of value here for the moment, let's say 10,000. So we're the cutoff for the low-pass filter is 10,000 hertz. Um, and then let's just create a multiplier object, command one, star, and then let's just say seven. And let's have the MIDI to frequency go into the right inlet. I'm sorry. Uh, let's have it go into the left inlet of our time seven. And then, whoops, let's try to move this over here. And we'll have that go into the right inlet of our low pass filter. Make that a little bit bigger. OK. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a trigger bang bang. So TBB. OK. We'll put that there. And we'll have the MIDI to frequency go in there. So what this will do is uh, trigger our messages that are going to go into our V-line tilde object. But instead of doing messages this time, we're going to create a couple new objects. Uh, command 1, and we're going to say pack 1, and uh, we're just going to use a token value here of 500, OK? And that will go there. And we're going to create our delay object. I'm going to say 500, 
And our second vein will go into that one. And then underneath that we'll have pack 0, 500. Okay. And then let's create our V-line. Tilda. Okay. And then we connect pack, the first pack, to the first inlet. And then we'll connect this to the first inlet. And then we're going to create uh, an outlet, tilde. And then we're going to create a signal multiplier. Can't forget that. Very important. And we're going to attach our V-line to the right inlet of that. And we'll connect that low-pass filter to the left inlet. And then we'll connect the output of the signal multiplier to outlet. All right. And we're going to create a couple new objects right now. And we're going to make one that's just R, which stands for receive, and we're going to title that attack. So R attack. Okay. And we're going to have that go into the right inlet of our first pack. And then we're going to create another new object, R release. We're going to have that go into the right inlet of our pack. And actually, what we want to do, let's do this, create an object, TFF. So that's trigger, float, float. And it will send out numbers. So we want the first one to go to that, our first pack, and then the second float to go to our delay. That way our delay corresponds with, with the attack. So that if we increase our attack time for the amplitude, the delay will increase uh, complementary to it, and then we will have a full attack, and then the decay will begin, or the release, rather. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that patch. We're going to close it, and we're going to create a new patch in our master patch, clone lesson 2 saw.cl space and 64. Okay. So what that means is we can have a maximum of 64 simultaneous notes occurring. And we won't have any pops. And again, the object is clone. And then you're going to space and then the name of the file that you created for our subpatch, .cl. You don't need the .pd. OK. I'm going to create a new object here called a V slider. Uh, Shift Command V to create a v-slider, and then command D to create a duplicate of it. Okay, and if you control click on your first v-slider, you can select the properties. And we're going to change the parameters to be logarithmic. And I'm going to say 20 to 10,000 and say OK. And then for the second one, I'm going to do the same thing, logarithmic. 20 to 10,000. Okay. I'm going to create a couple number boxes to go underneath each one of these so we can actually see what values we're producing with our sliders. And then I'm going to create what's called a send object, just S, attack. And then this will go to our S attack. And then S, release. And that will go to our release. So this will allow us to control the differing parameters of our amplitude envelope. OK. So then coming out of clone, we just need to create a signal multiplier, say uh, 0 0.5 for right now. OK. And then we're going to create our DAC, DAC tilde. Okay, we'll connect to both outlets. Got to make sure we're getting sound out of both speakers here. We connect to those. All right. And then, oh, one integral thing we forgot was adding our rhythmic variation element to our metronome. So let's create another random. 
And let's just say random 300. And we're going to add a value here just as a baseline of what it can be at its lowest. And we're going to say 50 this time. We're going to delete that first line. Let's create an object, TBB, our trigger bing bang. We'll connect our metronome to trigger bang bang. We'll connect the first outlet to our random 12 and our second outlet to random 300. And then for the output of random 300 plus 50, we have we will connect the addition object to the right inlet of our metronome. OK. Uh, let's see, I think that's just about everything. We'll make sure that our DSP is turned on. Remember, command slash here. OK. And then let's go ahead and set some values for attack and release. And let's turn on our metronome and see what we have. All right. So we have really brief attacks happening here. Let's increase our attack time. And lower our release time. So we see how that is overlapping now. Let's make really short attacks. Let's make long releases. And then, while this is going on, let's go ahead and create another V slider here, shift command V, and let's change the properties of that. And let's say we want this to be able to go from 50 up to 4,000, okay? And logarithmic, okay? We'll create a number box. Oops, that's a message, not a number, sorry. Here's a number box. We'll attach that, and let's attach that to our random to the right inlet and now we can change the constraints here of our tempi so it has this, the potential for this to get longer values increases nice Long releases. Hmm. All right, everybody. That'll do it for Listen To today. I hope all of you have a great day. Thank you.